I shall make this video by asking and answering, in brief, two central questions. First, what is dual power? Second, what is dual power's relationship to anarchism as a strategy for a free society? In order to answer this, we have to consider the kind of revolutionary social change anarchists desire. What kind of social change is this, you ask? It is this, social revolution. Any serious anarchist with intent to alter society for the better seeks radical change in social attitudes, economic and political arrangements, interpersonal relations, and the like. We seek a new social paradigm to alter society and the, and the individuals in it to reflect the values and reality of voluntarism, free association, mutual aid, cooperation, worker self-management, and the freedom to do what one wants with the fruits of his labor. So it is cultural change we desire, and from this cultural change, a radical shift in the way society is organized. Now, one should rightfully ask, how can you achieve this? And to answer this, one must understand dual power. Dual power in an anarchist context is the carefully calculated and purposeful creation of a new set of institutions in the old society one seeks to change. These institutions are designed for changing the old society, crafted to erode their power structure by superimposing the new power structure. Dual power seeks to compete with and overtake the pre-existing state. It challenges the monocentric power system of the state by creating an economic, political, and cultural power structure of its own, thus creating a dual power system and a formerly monocentric power system. In a dual power, in dual power, there are two kinds of institutions, and they each have a set of institutional roles designed for creating a new society. The first kind of institution is an alternative institution. Alternative institutions seek to break the monopoly of the old monocentric system by giving the general public choice in the kinds of institutions they participate in. These institutions are typically a radically new revision of the kind of institutions that make economic, cultural, and political life possible. We can understand what these kinds of proto-institutions are by understanding what state institutions or status institutions they would seek to offer an alternative to and or replace. A few examples. State police could be replaced with a community defensive network. State central banks could re be replaced with mutualist banking. State subsidized superstores like Walmart could be replaced with anarchist grocery store co-ops. State education systems could be replaced with anarchist free schools. The state health care service could be replaced with voluntary health care cooperatives. Centralized state planning commissions could be replaced with decentralized participatory planning networks. In this way, the alternative institutions that are a part of a dual power strategy form a kind of dialectical relationship to the status quo. Their role is one of negation and synthesis. They seek to void the old institutions by outcompeting them, offer the, offering the public a more preferable and pragmatic means to achieve their own self-interest. What alternative institutions offer is an alternative. They give new choice to the consumer, empowering them with the freedom to participate in a whole new set of innovative institutions. These institutions employ novel solutions that break away from the decadent, archaic solutions of the old society. Under the assumption that people naturally try to maximize their benefits and minimize their costs, dual power seeks to cater to the needs of human beings by constructing institutions who, through competition, can be more efficient in providing the public with items and relationships that they perceive as valuable. Alternative institutions can accomplish this by radically divergent means of organizing. They seek to use participatory decision-making and participatory planning to decentralize and maximize incentives among all individuals in their particular base of production. Furthermore, such is done under anarchist principles of non-aggression, cooperation, and voluntarism. Furthermore, alternative institutions break down the ideological monopoly of the status quo and the public. The existence and success of alternative institutions demonstrates their real-world viability and destroys the myth of state capitalist system that it is the only solution. Now, let us move on to the second kind of institution in dual power strategy, counter-institutions. 
Counter institutions are institutions that are designed to protect alternative institutions from the status quo while simultaneously promoting their growth. The purpose of counter institutions is to grant alternative institutions functional space to carry out their day to day business operations without being subject to the coercion of the state or the lies of its propaganda machine. The real world instantiation of counter institutions may take the form of people's law collectives, i.e., groups of lawyers who support the anarchist movement and seek to protect them from state intervention, political protests, civil disobedience, leafleting or distribution of anarchist literature, or, in a possible circumstance, armed resistance to state violence and direct appropriation of illegitimate state buildings. It should be noted that there is no strict dichotomy between alternative institutions and counter-institutions. These categories are mere, merely useful distinctions, not rules of classification. Indeed, many alternative institutions may be able to defend and promote themselves. However, both kinds of institutions work together in order to initiate a social revolution, to replace the old authoritarian society with a libertarian one. Now that this question is out of the way, let us proceed on to the next question. What is dual power's relationship to anarchism? Dual power is essentially a means, an organizational tactic, that groups of organized anarchists who agree to its use can employ for the sake of a free society. The principles of equity, diversity, solidarity, liberty, and self-management are applied to a general strategy of removing the state. In addition to further serving the ends we seek, it also demonstrates to the public that we can practice what we preach, and serves as a real-world example that the public can both witness and participate in. Dual power seeks to di dispel two myths. One, that meaningful social, political, and economic change must come as a gift from a hierarchical authoritarian state. And two, that meaningful social, political, and economic change can only occur after some glorious revolution. Dual power takes the approach of the IWW and their age-old slogan of build a new world in the shell of the old. It is an example of what's known as prefigurative politics in which the very modes of organization and tactics undertaken by an individual or group accurately reflect the future society being sought. Alright, this concludes dual power in a nutshell. And there's a bit more to this strategy um, that I should probably like to cover in subsequent videos. And uh, um, there's a bit more I'd like to say on uh, how this would actually be in implemented through organizations like a general unit of anarchists, but I'll get to that in future videos. Thanks for listening.